my God. I'm so excited for this one because this is going to be a vote review of a Lucio player from GM1 that just sent a vote review from a scrim. And I want to see this. So, key moment one from 0 to 20 until 2 to 235. This happened so many times in this scrim. We pushed. I am speed and go in with the team like I think I should on this comp. And then I get hacked or knifed and die first often. What can I do to live better on Lucio on this comp and map even if they didn't have EMP while still doing damage such getting value? Okay, I think I should do on this comp. I feel like before we hop in, I feel like these decisions, if this is a scrim and this is GM, we have to go take abilities accordingly. Usually, let's hop in game to see the team comp from 220 until 235. This team comp is everything on low cooldown, so we have to talk about everything that's happening. Like, I have shout, I have amp, I have that, I have that. It's like, bam, 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 bam. Instead of, boom, 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 boom. So let's watch this from 220 until 245. He's off now. 220 until 235, I mean. Okay, speed boosting them back. My ultimate is good to go. Oof. Screams are a little bit tricky because we talk about ult advantage, we talk about communication. This is for people that don't know what screams are, imagine like practicing with your team like you play in a tournament. You know, like everybody's talking, you're playing against team versus team. <laughs> You're playing team versus team. So this is a little bit tricky just, just thinking of this before we play the team fight because you have three ultimates. You don't have beat. They have EMP. They have Krinult. They have beat. Okay, what's going to happen? Let's just watch this. Okay, I'm going to tell you number one thing. In teams... Dude, I'm so excited for this one. I'm not joking. In teams, help your team, play with your team, stay with your team. That's step number one. There's no reason for you to be on the left side. Always, especially if you're playing Lucio, you're the one that helps your teammates a bunch. Because right now, like, you might be talking, you might be ult tracking, but what, you're probably scouting for Sombra. Like, what is this? Yeah, you're scouting for Sombra. Okay, you're shooting. This is good, but you can scout for Sombra from the side. Like, you're isolating this angle here and this angle here too. You can just like jiggle around and shoot from here while walking back. So if your team walks in front, then you can obviously walk in front, then turn around and shoot. Or you can just, if you stay like this and you shoot, then for some reason it's very easy to avoid you. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, bro, you're spy checking me. You're shooting here. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm going to walk behind you. You're spy checking me here. Okay, fine. I'm going to walk behind you. Instead of like staying here, Turn around and spy check. Stay here, turn around and spy check. Walk in front, maybe walk in the back. If the plan, because I cannot hear your team communication. If your plan, in this case, if they have beat advantage or not, then you probably have to just have a very long fight. Either wait for your beat before... Wait, did they cap? They capped. Okay. You just watch this. So, because you were too focused on spy checking, you lost, like, so much time in the team fight in which you weren't part of the team fight. So in this case, yes, you're spy checking, you're spy checking, you're spy checking, but right now from here. Let's count the seconds. One second, two seconds, and that's EMP. That's EMP. Now let's observe if you would have had, if you would have jumped with Junker Queen from the beginning from here. If the call is to like jump on them, and now you speed and I'm from here. Speed and I'm from here. Apagando las luces. Maybe boop melee, maybe another kill. Five versus three, fight is one. Maybe you amp all the way. Maybe you get some shots onto the Kiko before she TPs out. That's it. Just a little bit of damage. Fight is over. This is so unlucky in scrims because, like, it's like comes down to the wire. You know, comes down to the wire. So this entire team, I don't care about what happens right now. All I care about is about this being a big decision of you committing to, like, spy checking instead of committing to, to the call of going in. I, I play like in a bunch of teams like this in tournaments and everybody just wants to do everything. Well, if your team is proactive, which is the right thing to do in this case, it's super good. The EMP that went for Lucio. They knew that they had beat advantage because they won one or two team fights in a go. That's super good. Who came up with that call? If it was you, that's amazing. But here's the thing. EMP, the Lucio, go in. Go in. Because like, like, what are you doing right now is this. If you're at a disadvantage, 
then you want to create an advantage. You staying here and looking and scouting and stuff instead of like committing with your team for the beginning, you're doing a disadvantage. You're playing by thinking that you lost in team fight. You, like it's a, about mentality thing. And this happens in every rating. This happens in every tournament. This happens in every game. Okay. And Knowing like when to adapt and be like with full confidence with what you need to do and committing to that is what's going to make you an amazing player in Overwatch. So in this case, you will get already starting the fight by worrying that you don't have beat and worrying about checking for Sombra instead of, okay, uh, guys, we're going to go in with EMP on Sombra. Okay, fine. Go in EMP on Sombra. Is there a Sombra nearby? No? Okay, okay. Three, two, one. Boom. I'm going. Like... Think of what it can do to the enemies rather than what it can do to you. I'm not saying to not spy check, but I'm just saying that I can I can see what was inside your head in this two or three seconds because the call caught you off guard here. It caught you off guard. So you're walking back with your team from spawn. This is this is like where the disconnect happens. Okay, I scout. Okay, we're ready. I'm gonna go in with the MP. Pro some brass probably talking. Okay, we're preparing, we're spamming, bomb bomb. We're checking. Trying to see what happens. Maybe we can see the Sombra. Okay, guys, I'm going in. Three, two, oh, one, yeah. boom. Even if you're like this late, a little bit faster, because like you can see your you see and hear your team walking in this position, and you're not gonna need to follow up. So like you wait for the enemies to do something, you wait for your teammates to do something. And then you do something. If you want to win and if you want to be an amazing player at this rating, you have to do something. You can't wait for, your, for the team to do a mistake, the enemy team to do a mistake, or for your team to carry you and you to help them. You have to create consistent pressure because Overwatch is, I'm going to sound goddammit like, like Al Pacino. It's a game of inches. Every inch matters, every shot matters, every space matters, every wall guide matters, every bullet matters, every destroying the railings matters, everything matters at this level, everything. You being lazy with aiming down or aiming up, everything matters, you do not know the consequence because I've been talking about this for a very long time, okay? I'm gonna draw something, I'm sorry for the flashbang, it's like 0.0001 percent of maybe adding to uh, uh, result number A, consistent of 70% win chance if Sombra EMP'd Lucio, which happened, and the 0.001% was you staying on the stairs at the beginning instead of on the side, but this would have contributed to like 100%, like slow, 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 slow. Everything in addition will get you to 100%, which is the one team fight. Let's continue with this. Because right now, this would have been over. Because you had mechanics, okay? Tracer dead, Kiriko probably dead. You shoot a little bit, you go for the Sombra. That's interesting, trying to finish the kill. Nothing else I can talk about here rather than aiming a little bit better. Like, literally nothing else I can talk about. Your, your job over here, like, this is it. Like, what can, what can you say? Yeah, yeah, dude, just aim better. Target prioritization was good. Wait, what, what was happening here? I can't do anything to uh, to the queen in this case. You already used them to get there. You can't boop. You can't get kills. You spin again. And now you decide. You don't know where Kiko TP'd, so you just decide to go for somebody. Because you're not going to get your beat in time. You're not going to be able to burst Junker Queen in time. So you just stand around and shoot the Sombra. It's just like uh, a, a big decision for you to like go into the Sombra and then shoot the Queen. I think your team was communicating Queen, 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 Queen. In that case, you should follow on the call because Queen did not ult there. You would have probably won the team fight. You could have lived too. But having the initiative to like go into the Sombra is also pretty decent. It's not that bad. It's like the second best thing that we could have done in this team fight. The fact they're also getting cover and just some mechanical things here and there. Okay. But I see just from this that you're more of a team player. So if you, the call is to just shoot queen, 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 go for easy headshots, play around cover, poop them back, be proactive. Don't wait for the enemies to do stuff to you. You said here, happened so many times, we pushed, I am speed and going with the team, like I think I should do in this comp, but then you die first very often. No, you did not go in with your team. Your team went in, and then you went in. Let's continue watching. From 3 for 15, 
until 3.30. With beat, am I not supposed to stay in and fight? What do I beat in this comp in general? And where should I go to fight since I clearly died in the open? Also, reactive versus proactive beats from 3.15 until 3.30. Where is 3.15? This is 3.15 until 3.30. Right, took a screenshot, what? Oh, I wanna watch the fight. That's a good beat. That is a good beat. Let's watch the entire team fight. If you're doubting that, that was a decent beat. If you want to like know a secret in scrims and stuff, if you're not confident with what you need to beat, if you always beat second, you'll win the fight. <laughs> if you ever doubt, if you ever struggle in any team comp, if you use beat second, you'll win. Usually, that's what's gonna happen. Like, seriously. You can't mess that up because you're gonna have beat longer than them. The fact that you go here, by the way, this is good. Oh, one big thing though. One big thing. In this thing comp, I feel like if you're playing against Sombra and you're playing with Lucio and you're staying with your team, try to wait for Sombra to go for a hack on somebody before you decide to use your boop. Because you booping the Junker Queen here was good overall, but Sombra's getting hacked. Uh, your Queen is getting hacked from the right side. Right? I think she actually cancels the ultimate. Yeah, she cancels the ultimate. She gets hacked. So in this case, like in the middle of the team fights, instead of going like, I'm gonna try to boop somebody in. Who? Tracer can recall, Kiko can TP, Queen has a ton of HP, so I can translocate. Who are you booping in? It's not like you're gonna boop a Cassidy or a Soldier, and then that's it. But you can use your boop to cancel hack. If you stay close to uh, the one that you feel like somebody's gonna focus. In this case, usually if Kiko, if they play really well, probably gonna hack Jungle Queen. That's like the most consistent hacking target. They're gonna hunt for Tracer or uh, Sombra if they can catch them off guard. But I would usually say like in these games, Probably Queen is going to be hacked most of the times because everybody's going to stay together and she can't shout and you can burst them really fast. Or Lucy or Kiri, but most of the time it's going to be Queen. So for you, this is actually going to be a very easy boop. Like, you see Sombra here, right? You see Sombra here. So right now you almost have beat. You reload. Okay, three bullets, that happens. You reload. You try to climb because you see a boop target, but here's the hack. Imagine if you would have booped here or shot here. Hack complete. Like, your focus would have been on the, to the Sombra. You would have had Jungle Queen ultimate, you would have won the team fight. Because then Lucio would have used beat, you would have had beat second, that's it. Going for the boop tag. Doesn't work, you kite back, do you Suzu? Good on speed boost, good wall riding, but I just want to talk about something mechanically speaking. If you're playing Lucio and you want to become a great Lucio player, if you watch any Overwatch League pop, you're going to see that Lucio's in this case, they disengage by wall riding backwards. Why? Because they can still do damage, see where the enemies are, instead of like just turning around and wall guiding like this. Like trust your wall guiding abilities. So in this case, instead of turning around, you know you have beat, they would have just like... They have the map in the back of their head. Does that make sense? So, you went in, you look for the boop, and now wall guide like this, exactly. Do you use beat? Oh no, I'm scared. Nope, still wall guide backwards. Backwards, backwards, backwards. Backwards, drop here, spam, spam, spam. Who knows, you'd have had beat a little bit later, a little bit earlier, you might have seen this stuff better. You might have been able to get in cover at the car. And now that everybody is low, this is like where the confusion is. Cause like you wanna go in, you wanna go in, but you're just easy to target. It's like, Lucio never has to die in this team comp, literally. Because you can boop away people that go for you, you have a ton of mobility with your goal guide. This doesn't mean that you have to stay in the open. Because, like, what, what Lucio excels at? He excels at amping, right? Like, speed boost usage and being incredibly hard to, to eliminate. Right here, you're the tank. View it like this. Hmm. I'm going to make a very fast... No, actually, you can see this. I don't have to draw anything. You can see this. Let's watch the team fight from this area. So fight is happening. Good beat overall. You shouldn't judge yourself for this beat. You got the beat. You were all low. It was a good beat, to be honest. But now let's look at the team fight here. 
And what is happening? You're frontlining, Sombra's here, Kiriko's here, Queen is here, Tracer's here. This is a lack of communication. What I would have said, you can just use beat to stabilize, by the way. If you use beat, it doesn't mean that I have five seconds to go in and... This is like something that I'm noticing in, in Overwatch 2 way more than I did in Overwatch 1. In Overwatch 1, when ultimates were happening, or like when, when you would see the enemies, it would be like this much risk of like going for a kill. In Overwatch 2, it's wait and then explode. And sometimes ultimate don't help you explode. For example, in this case, use your beat when you're at disadvantage to survive. You cannot amp to explode. Your team is regrouping. How are you going to explode? What I mean with explode is everybody go on somebody really fast. Kind of like we use Nano Winston, go, Tracer double dashes on them, Winston jumps, you throw a nade, that's like an explosion that's happening. In this case, you can't explode after using the beat. So there's no way, no reason for you to like push in front, go in front, right? Like, yeah, you, you, if you see somebody at a position, like for example, Kiko used TP. Or Tracer used recall and you heard all three dashes. Like somebody tells the kid is somewhere. Then I could understand trading four versus four. But in this case, when you don't know about the enemy cooldowns, there is no reason for you to press W and push your advantage. So like push like push the limits of this. So for example, you use the beat, you just chill here, you can just play around the car. Imagine playing around the car, helping your tracer fight the other tracer on the side, for example. Shooting the queen. So let's watch the entire team fight from this perspective. You walk back. You chill, you're like, I'm in cover, you drop the beat. Perfect, you, you're still in your aura, by the way, over here, okay? By just playing at the cog. Queen goes for you, you can walk a little bit backwards. Ba ba bam, ba ba bam, force the key equity TP. Shoot her, you have beat. Shoot her. Did you hear that somebody translocated? Was that the thing? No, you didn't. So. As a general rule of thumb, specifically in this team comp, you can commit to looking for picks and like trading in these types of situations if Keiko used Suzu and teleport and you know of that. If she used her swift step and Suzu, you can go and feed. If Tracer used recall and she, you heard the dashes, she might have only one dash, you can go and feed. If Sombra translocated away and you don't see it and the translocator broke she can't go translocator you can go and feed otherwise stay with your team in this case okay because like you're committing you're committing but someone can always get away Hugo can always help again this entire team fight imagine if it would have happened with you playing from here you drop the beat you get covered you want to fight and now I'm thinking, like, you're not shooting random, you're thinking, because I see that you have a crush on Sombra, you, you, you're just shooting the Sombra. No, try to force Keiko TP. Try to force Keiko TP, try to force Tracer away. Yeah, you can focus on Sombra stuff, but in this case, when I use the beat, I would think Sombra, uh, Sombra, I mean Keiko, Keiko, Keiko. Turn around, fight the supports here, force okay. the cooldowns, because the Lucio might, might have forced uh, Keiko TP. Now imagine you shoot, oh, she was hacked. Imagine the damage here. Who knows how the fight would have went if this would have happened. What else is happening in the vote review that you said? Reactive beats versus proactive beats. What do I beat in this thing comp in general? Uh, EMP or Queen Ultimate depending on your team if they have Suze or not. Usually what's going to happen is the following. There will be a bunch of burst damage onto your Queen. And the enemy team will try to force Suzu after Suzu is forced. Then Queen is going to ult, and that's what you want to beat. If you have beat advantage, because they did a bad beat, then you can just win the next fight by using beat. Or if the damage is not being forced from both, if the Suzu is not being forced by the enemies, and they have EMP, then of course you're going to beat the EMP. You don't beat Pulse Bomb, you don't beat Fox that much, unless you feel like the team fight is being won. So proactively speaking, it's... This is the thing with Lucio. It's more of a feeling. This is more like of a confidence issue, I would say. It's like mathematically, you know? Like, Keiko used Suzu. They have Queen ult. I beat that. Uh, it's five versus five. No ultimates are up. I know I have beat advantage. I beat that. They use Fox. We don't have Fox. We're becoming low HP. I use beat. So, like, you want to use beat to counter what the enemies do. Because you have a bunch of things to counter. You can counter Jagger Queen ult, you can counter Fox, you can counter your, uh, your team being low, and you can counter EMP. If the enemies don't have 
ultimates and you have beat advantage, then you either can decide to save the beat if you feel like you're gonna win the team fight without using beat, or just use it as fast as you possibly can. One of the two things. Uh, and where did I fight since I clearly died in the open? You had the right intention again of playing from the car and then rotating here. As a good goal of Tom, I'm gonna tell you the following, okay? This happens in every meta and... Wait, let me take a sip of water. Mm. If you don't know where to position yourself, view it like this. Can I see the tank in front of me? Yes. Where's Kiriko? Is she close? She's close, yes. I will work from here. So over here, this team fight, for example. I use beat. I'm gonna watch the entire, we're gonna watch like everything in this rhythm, in this style, okay? And then you work from that. Can I see queen? Yes. Is Kiriko close? Yes. Okay, good positioning. If we're boop, okay, good. I walk back. Okay, pause. Can I see Queen? Yes. Can I see Kiko? Yes. Good positioning. Beat. Can I see Queen? Kind of. Can I see Kiko? Uh, I don't know where she is. What's happening? I'm dead. Let's watch the next team fight. Same goals. Let's get back to it. We group, we group, we group. Good wall guiding, hold the angles. Okay, you're in front. Winning a little bit, nice pressure. I like it, shooting the Keiko. Can I see the queen? Yes. Keiko close by, yes. Good, good amp. I don't know if that was the call or not, but that was a good amp. Trying to finish the kill on Kiggy. Nice. Okay, let's watch the next team fight. Let's see same goals. Can't scout time to be annoying. What? What is he doing? Free kill. There you go, you won. He sacked and popped the hack. Good. I see Queen, I see Kiko, this is the bad. I don't care, we have the advantage here. Just just shoot the, shoot the Queen. Okay. What did we see positioning wise, by, by the way? <laughs> exactly what we talked about a little bit earlier. You're the first one. If you see that your Queen doesn't go in that deep, don't do that. Okay? So wait, you had the, like, you had the good intention, but then your brain went like, go in! Because, like, I, I can see the vote, I can see the discussions after. The guys, go in. I'm going in, but we're not going in, but then we have to go in. Go in. So, like, yes, you go with queen. You can still do damage without getting this close. You can still play from over here. Spam a little bit. Where is your team gonna kite in this case? Team is gonna kite left side. You kite right side, opposite of this, and queen is in front, is in the back, while you are over here. Another thing, your team not falling on the amp. Usage there, it's a, a bit of a mistake. But still, look at the splitting here. Imagine Kiriko. Kiriko could help you here, by the way. It seemed that it was a bad play. It wasn't a bad play. You're five versus four, you want to pressure the advantage. They used EMP and Fox. You used Amp to take the engage. Understandable. You could have not Amped uh, at the same time because they didn't have Lucio to disengage if you kept track of the Queen Shout. But in this case, it's more of a kiting issue. This is not about you feeding. It's, it's more about a kiting issue, about the, about the general goal. So over here, you go in. We go deep. Oh, get EMP'd. Uh, look at the Suzu. Suzu in heal. Where's Kiriko? Kiriko is here? Uh-uh. We're pushing the robot. We're fighting here. We kite here. You can't create off angles with Lucio like this, okay? No way. And then Kiko TPs in, and Kiko should have followed that in the first place. Kiko should have followed that, but if she doesn't follow, what can you do? I right? talk about that afterwards. And some, some chatting chatters are saying that it's uh, Kiko's fault. I agree that it's Kiko's fault, like when team has to push in. So like in this case, by the way, this is everybody's fault. So like, let's watch this entire team fight. Is that Suzu? Yeah, they probably want, they, they misclicked. Okay, so let's see what happens for this team fight. They get a kill. Team, push in. Everybody, somebody has to be here he, too. What is happening? Team, go. Go. Queen. Queen, shout. Speed boost. Go. 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 Hello. Go. Just go. Trace like one of you and you don't care about that. Even if somebody goes there. 
It's gonna be uh, what? A four versus two? Just go, go, kill, 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 kill. Everybody just helps the case of one of you on. This is like the thing with GM VOD, you know? It's more of a... You, you, you make... You doubt yourself when it's actually like more of a, a team thing. If you have... If you are a vocal shot caller, right? And you see that you have the advantage, five versus four, and you have the amp, just say, queen, 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 queen. That's it, that's what I gotta say, don't see. I'm gonna amp us in because we're plus one in this game. Queen, that's it. You have the speed boost, you have the one that can talk, just say, queen, 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 queen. If Tracer dies in the one of you, and it's not on you. You know what I mean? Good intention here, but again, like the kiting for me in a team that is not clicking that much. Should have all just went, should have kited towards your Kiriko. Again, the golden goal of positioning and uncoordinated teams with Lucio is see your tank so you can help your tank. See who else you can help from your team that is going to get dived. That has like a big priority in getting focused. In this case, it's going to be Kiriko. It would have been Ana. It would have been Baptiste. It's like flex your, uh, flex. Help your flex support and see your tank. In this case, if you kite to the right side, you're expecting help. You shouldn't expect help when you play Lucia. You ask for low resources because you can make their lives easier. If you would have kited the left side, Kiko would have landed the Suzu. You would have also healed yourself up. If Kiko would have TP'd right side with you, then yes, you would have used Suzu to help you. The fight would have still been happening, but then uh, your queen would have died. Anyway, they, they still, I think they would have won the fight. They were like four versus three shooting here, even if Kiko was with you. So again, I'm gonna do one more very fast team fight. I know that we have four minutes remaining, but this is a GM one void give you, so we're not gonna be talking that much about what's happening. Let's watch this entire concept. We're spectating Domsky, the Red Lucio. This entire concept, same thing. Okay, waiting a little bit, you staying with your team. Uh, why are you first? Why are you first? Queen, then you. Good, this is good. Queen, then you. Nice, a little bit better. This fight is looking good for Time you. For the Time for the a little bit better, but still, it's like, see, same thing. You here, queen here. When it should be you here, queen here, here. You know what I mean? Like, it's... You're not Kiriko. You're not Kiriko. So, same thing. See somebody in front of you, and then somebody around you. See the tank, see your other support. And then you can work around with that. Who knows? Maybe booping here would have worked. Somebody, maybe you would have pressured Kiko way faster because if you pressure the ones that are pressuring your tank and you force recall, you force translocate, you force TP, you force Suzu, then your Trace 6 list somewhere can just follow up on them rather than you going at them. Because like you're going and shooting at them in the first place, you're forcing um, your resources from the beginning rather than waiting for them to do some stuff in the middle of the team fights and then you capitalize on that. Let's go into the document because we have a couple of minutes remaining. What to work on to improve fast? I think your mechanics are uh, not the best, not the best, but the good. Okay, the good. Uh, aim, pull downs, decision making. This is I'm gonna be honest with you. This is all about not aim. We can all have better aim, by the way. So I'm gonna go with positioning and decision making. So, this is more of a morale thing. Positioning and decision making. Number one, it recommends you do the following. Uh, this is the thing with the, like scrim reviews, because if you watch them, you're going to see that it's a, a bunch of team issues, right? But the easiest way to help a team play better is for you to adapt to how the team plays, okay? So, in this case, it recommends you do the following. Number one, with Lucia, see the tank in front of you, in your, in your point of view, and be in smell range of support. So you can... Okay. <laughs> is Kiriko close? Okay, I can help Kiriko and I see the tank. I'm not joking. This, this is it. So literally, see the tank? So you can speed boost your tank, help your tank, whatever, and then be in smell range of supports. Number two, commit to kills if they don't have resources. If you can land every single burst shot with Lucio, be a mechanically gifted, oh my god, everything. Okay, dude, go for it. But even if you do that, she's going to translocate away. She's going to recall away. She's going to Suzu. She's going to swift step. So what I mean is, if you see Sombra and you want to go for Sombra, you, you have to wait for these cooldowns to be used. You know what I mean? You have to wait for these cooldowns to be used. So like, for example, you see Sombra, you hear Tracer say, I broke the translocator. <laughs> Instantly, Sombra. Kiko no TP, no Suzu. Boom, 
Kiriko. Three sun recall. Boom. Three sun. You know what I mean? Rather than, okay, I see Sombra. I'm going to go for Sombra. Oh. Okay, I see Kiriko. I'm going to go for Kiriko. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, if you commit, it has to be a reason why you commit. Number three. Wall ride backwards from disengages and shoot. I know this is not that uh, important. Uh, this might not seem that important, but if you're going to watch like a ton of Lucia mains, you're going to see that they, even when they wall guide, they're still in the fight. Like, no, they're still in the fight, bro. So I would not, I'm not joking with this. I think you have to hop in uh, custom game modes and just wall guide backwards with Lucia while shooting. You're going to get a bunch of results. Number four, depends on how your team wants to play and stuff, but all I can say is that uh, don't overcommit spy checking for Sombra, but commit resources to her. So, like, don't, you're not diva to shoot non-stop. Don't, you can spy check and stuff, but don't overdo it as in it's your life goal to do so. But rather focus on who she gonna hack, if that makes sense. Because, like, if she wants to hack, she, you will maybe have a possibility of interrupting the hack. I'm not going to say, I'm not saying that you can boop the hack. You just have to do damage, you know? And if you just, like, for example, uh, this is a very fast example. So, this is uh, 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 fast growing. Very fast growing. I'm going to be done very soon. Very soon, very soon, very soon, very soon, very soon. Not, not, I said it as this, the background. No, fast growing. Sorry about this. So, um, this is... This is the goat, okay? Sombra can go from over here or from uh, this side, let's say, okay? Or from this side. Team, enemy team is here. Your team is here. EMP will not be done from here because she's going to shoot. She might get spy checked. So she's probably going to EMP from this area. So you're playing Lucio. You shouldn't spy check here or here. You should spy check this area. So if you spy check this area, yes, you're going to try to shoot in this area. But you can play on the outside of the area to maybe interrupt the hack. So like, for example, this is your team. This is the area that you want to play from. If you play from here, then this is the area that you can use to help your team. And you might be in boop range of stopping the, the Sombra hacking somebody. Or the Sombra, like, just shooting somebody. So, like... Pre-analyze what's going to happen in the team fights, and you have a good idea of like what to do against Sombras. A pretty good idea, but assume like what's think about like, like how is she going to approach the team fight? Where is she going to hack from? Who's she going to hack? Queen, Wag, right side. Okay, I play right side of the queen. I play here. Who's she going to hack? Uh, uh Kiriko or Queen? Okay, from Wag in the back. Okay, in the back. I'm going to play a little bit in the back. Okay, do this, do the following. Wall guide in Q backwards on maps. This will help you improve a bunch. Number two, versus Sombra. Try to annoy her without spy checking. So like, you can annoy her by spy checking. But what I mean by this is, if you make a Sombra go like, uh, I got forced out because Lucio. If you go for her after she's a translocator, if you break the translocator, if you interrupt the hack, if you do a good beat with the EMP, if you make her over invest resources for you, then you annoy Sombra in that case. So that's really good. Number three, chase one enemy after they use resources and get the kill. For example, Kiko uses TP... And Suzu, you chase. Okay? Kiko uses TP and Suzu, you chase. Uh, Tracer uses Recall, doesn't have that many dashes. You chase, and so on. Do this one time in a scrim. Just one time. Two times, try to annoy Sombra in the team fights by looking for what she's gonna do. It's like this, bro. If you're looking for what she's gonna do, then she can't do the plan because you're gonna interrupt the plan before she can do the plan. Compared to... I'm going to wait and see what Sombra is going to do. And then I'm going to wait. And I'm going to see what's going to happen. And number four, this is the name of the game in any scrim. Proactive, 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 proactive. Think of what you can do to the enemies, not what they can do to you. 
And then if you mess up, no problem. You can adapt. But you have to be the first ones, uh, the first one that's going to like pull the trigger. And if your team doesn't help you, I don't know, like your team communication, your extraction and stuff. But seriously, like in team fights, if you have speed boost, uh, speed boost available, just I have amp in three. Speeding, queen, 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 back. Uh, ten percent to beat. I fork sombra. Let's go. Like basic calls, you know, basic calls, and just call them because I, I I can't hear your comms. I don't know what you're talking about. But speed boost usage, uh, having beat available, speed use speed boost usage mostly in every game in every meta with Lucio is crucial to call out and when you're speeding and when not. Okay, so I hope you found this vote review useful. Hopefully your Lucio gameplay will improve after this one. And please let me know in the comments if you uh, if you enjoyed it or not. All right, till next time, and we'll seven out.